Welcome back, gang. It's Deltia from Deltiasgaming.com, and the Arcanist is finally just about here. June 5th on PC, June 20th on console, and I want to bring you 15 tips, essential tips, to help you get prepared for the Arcanist and start off right. You're going to want to watch this video and know exactly what race you should pick when you start, how you can optimize your XP gains, how you can max out those annoying PvP skill lines, how much gold you need to save, how you can cheese mount speed, how you can start very fast, very effective, so you can max this thing out and get into the action right away. Do me a big favor, hit that thumbs up if you got something out of this. Leave me a comment to help other people if I miss something specifically, because you know I always do. And also, check the links in the description below for Arcanist Build. I've been playing it for a hundred hours or more and I have a lot to say about it. Let's get started. The first thing is, number one, select your play style and you need to know what this class excels at and what it does not excel at. Assuming you don't know anything about the Arcanist, the Arcanist builds up Cruxes, kind of like a Dragonite using Molten Whip. It's shown visually with this green little circle around you at a max of three Cruxes. Whether you're a tank, DPS, healer, doesn't matter, PvP sweat, you're going to need this mechanic and know how to use it. What the game wants you to do is essentially build up these cruxes as a damage dealer anyways and dump it into a 4.5 second channel called Fate Carver. As a tank or a healer, you're also going to have to kind of build up these cruxes and dump them from something else. This will make you more tanky, heal better, so on and so forth. So the mechanic is building cruxes up and using this very long 4.5 second beam, or it can be a little bit longer depending on the morph you pick. It plays very different than anything else in the Elder Scrolls line. Currently, on the last testing cycle, it does a lot of damage. I was able to complete Batashram Hollows, 19 minutes, one of my fastest scores ever, absolutely breezing through on a stamina based hybrid DPS and I do love it for PvE. So here's what you need to know about the playstyle so you can make a choice. As a damage dealer, like I said, it's going to parse very high now. It's going to do a massive amount of damage and it's actually a little bit easier to play because you're using that 4.5 second channel rather than loading up on eight or nine dots and not really using the main spammable. It's fun, it's unique, but it does come with some downsides because you can get interrupted, bashed, nailed, CC'd, and killed while you're vulnerable in that 4.5 second beam. It's okay on magic as a damage dealer, not exactly my favorite as stamina, it just seems to absolutely melt. Because of the medium armor passives, dual wield, and just the available medium armor gear sets, it's just a winner on magic. Next up is tanks and healer, and it makes a god tier fantastic support class. The reason why is it has unique buffs, minor courage, which increases weapon and spell damage by 215. This stacks with major courage. This buff in particular is usually ran at end game by a tank and is a very sought after buff because most trials groups want to stack both of this to get optimal damage. Having a class built in with this buff with very high uptime makes it one that's going to be very viable at end game PvE and even PvP to some extent. It also has built in minor vulnerability and minor brittle along with minor breach as well, the tank skill line. So healing and tanking, it's fantastic along with DPS, it makes it one of the best well-rounded PvE classes in the game at launch. It's not super overpowered though at any one aspect, so be aware. PvP, I'm very skeptical of this and I don't think it's gonna be meta. The ultimates are absolutely fantastic, but it doesn't have a burst heal like Coagulating Blood. It doesn't have a delayed burst damage mechanic like Deep Fissure. It does have that range Fate Carver, but that's very, very hard to get that off in high mobility, high crowd control environments. So will I still play? Will I still make builds for it? Absolutely. But I don't think it's gonna be S tier in PvP. And I think it's gonna be A tier in a lot of categories in PvE. Me personally, I'm playing it as a stamina hybrid DPS and I will play it as a healer because I love healing in the Elder Scrolls. Number two, you need to pick the ideal race for this class. So me personally, I'm going to pick a Khajiit. The reason why I like Khajiits is it's well-rounded. So you have a little bit of magic and health and stamina recovery. You have a little bit of max resources, magic, health, and stamina, and you have a unique passive for critical damage and critical healing by 12%. It's just super bursty. A lot of people will tell you to play a Dunmer, and the reason why you get weapon and spell damage, you get max stamina and max magic. So you can go back and forth between magic and stamina and do very, very well. Another suggestion I would pick if I was playing purely magic would be the high elf. And the reason why is the High Elf gets a unique passive when you are using the ability with a channel or a cast time reduce your damage taken by 5%. 
Considering the Arcanus is built entirely around cast times and channels, this will make you much more survival and is a unique passive if you're going to play a particular magic build. For a healer, I recommend Breton for pure resource sustain or an Argonian for sturdiness. For a tank, I would recommend an Imperial for reduced ultimate cost and the cost of your abilities or a Nord for quick ultimate generation. Just don't freak out about the race. You can't always change away the token, it costs an arm and a leg, but you can if you love your character. Also, you will need the pick any race, any alliance if you're not in that specific alliance, which I'm going to talk about soon. But do not freak out about the race. It's not going to make or break your playstyle. You being good at the class in the Elder Scrolls is. Now, let's talk about alliances. Number three is picking the right factions. Just so you know, factions do not necessarily matter outside of PvP. So typically your faction is one of three. You're going to join and do PvP in Cyrodiil and Imperial City only is where that matters. Every faction has pros and cons and there's great players and bad players on them all. I would not sweat and freak out about picking a faction. This is not going to limit you for picking and playing the storylines. This is just going to determine Cyrodiil. And also you can change this with another very expensive token for the crown store if you make the wrong decision. So don't sweat it. Pick a faction. It aligns with the race that you want to have if you don't have any race any alliance so next up we're going to talk about storage space in number four and for storage space there's a couple containers you can buy and what i recommend is buying these containers putting them in your house and start storing stuff so as soon as you create your character you can zip on over to your house which is free pick up all this stuff and get to work leveling so there are large chests and small chests available you can get four of each they can be purchased one of two ways master crafting writ voucher more on that later or tell bars stones in Imperial City. Or you can just buy them with your credit card in the Crown Store. The large chest contains 60 items and the small coffer contains 30. There are 360 slots available. So ideally you want to buy this and store all the stuff I'm just about to tell you so your character can go and not clog up your entire bank with stuff meant for a brand new character. Because you're going to be putting gear, potions, food, everything we need so we can grab that and get ready to go right away. So start getting that storage space ready so you can shove it full of stuff to level and max out your character right away up next is number five and that's experience boosters and you can start stacking them saving them and knowing how they work so you can get the most experience right away so how experience boosters work there is an optimal way to rush to end game but if it's your first time playing i would not rush to end game i always say that but if you're like me and have leveled 40 characters in the elder scrolls online just disregard it i have a bunch of different grind videos i'll link in the description below if you want to see those but this is how XP boosters and leveling works. These can stack on top of each other. Armor at the training trait, armor and weapons, 10% for each at purple quality. You get 10% for having an ESO Plus membership, 10% for being married to another player. You have to buy the Ring of Mara and have it both equipped on you and your partner. 10% for being grouped with another player. And then you can only have one drink or one XP scroll booster at a time. So 50% for Sigic Ambrosia, 100% for ethereal ambrosia or 150 for mythic ethereal ambrosia and if there is an eso event going on like the witches festival or new life you'll get 100 percent from that so as of the making this video when this launches the arcanist there's not going to be a double xp event so my recommendation to you is get the 100% XP boosters. I have a ton of these saved on PCNA because you get a lot of these just for playing the game and your daily login rewards. So I just stacked a bunch of them. But the best bang for your buck if you're not made of gold in the Elder Scrolls is get the 100% ones. Those have really good value off the guild traders. And that's the Ethereal Ambrosia. And then next, what you're going to want to do is make sure you get the right gear set and the training trait and get at least purple quality gold on the weapons if you can, but more on that later. Speaking of gear sets, and it is a little bit later, we're going to talk about those and what I recommend highly is the Heartland Conqueror gear set. The reason why Heartland Conqueror, which is seven trait craftable in Blackwood, is absolutely god tier for leveling, it increases the effectiveness of your weapon trait by 100%. 
So what you can do, as you can imagine, is put training on it with Heartland Conqueror front and back bar and have a massive boost to that training trait for the entirety of your leveling in the Elder Scrolls. Another couple great sets to run if you have it available, Order's Wrath. This affects your critical multiplier, which will also increase your damage done and your healing when it crits. Daedra Trickery. Daedra Trick Daddy! Daedra Trickery is a fantastic defensive buff set that will keep you alive and it's pretty easy to get a hold of. Kind of an under radar set, Oblivion's Foe. This is a trait coming from Cold Harbor and you can use it with the Splitting Soul Trap, the world skill that you get right away in the beginning of the game. It gives an enormous super hard hitting damage over time proc and scales with your weapon and spell damage. Believe it or not, this thing will do amazing damage, especially at the start of the game. Then another set is Wretched Vitality, which is great if you need resource sustain. So I would number one pair Heartlands Conqueror with one of those sets if you need survivability, resource sustain, damage, or just something overall set and forget. Now what you're going to do if you have the resources for it, I would craft something at level three because most likely you're going to skip a tutorial unless it's your first time playing. Level three, 10, 20, and so on, or every 15 levels or so, so you can maintain your power. And that's where those storage chests are going to come in so you can put it in there. One way to cheese this, actually no, two ways to cheese this. You can mail this to another player and have them return it to you and just sits in your mail for 30 days. Or you can do really cheese, and I'm talking about cheddar cheese. Get 10 buddies together and form a guild bank. And then you can actually put up to 500 items in there. Though there's a caveat, I'm pretty sure you have to have 10 members at a time in that guild bank. Or you could hustle some brand new characters and say, hey, join my guild, it's free. Don't be that person. Moving on in leveling PvP skill lines. Look, not everyone loves PvP. I get it. Not everyone's a sweat lord running around trying to Rambo people down in battlegrounds when they should be playing Capture the Relic. But you need to level it because of the passives and active skills that pretty much everyone in the game is going to use. Even if you're a PvEer, most likely you're going to use Reviving Barrier or Aggressive Warhorn. Even tanks, healers, or damage dealers sometimes run these. Reaching support rank 9, for example, grants Magic Aid, increasing your magic recovery by 10% for each support ability slotted. So if you're running Barrier, you're going to get increased magic recovery for getting this. It's annoying to level those skill lines if you don't like PvP. So what I recommend is getting some Cololian War Tor. I'm sure I screwed up that pronunciation because I can barely read. That's why I'm on YouTube. Ideally, you want to pop this and do your battleground dailies at low level. That will give you a massive flood of XP and the Cololian War Tor will only affect the skill line specifically. So pop that, do a battleground or two to level up those skill lines fast. You want to get Razor Cow Trops and you also want to get Resolving Bigger, especially for stand builds. Cololian War Tor is craftable, consumable, and grants 50% alliance point for 30 minutes. There are more powerful versions of this with 100% and 150% experience boost, but they're absolutely ridiculously expensive. So I would stick with the 50%er, buy it off the guild trader or create it yourself. It'll be fantastic for you to level these up and get done with PvP if you can't stand it. Now what's up next is number seven, and that is getting enough gold to max out your inventory. Let me explain this. Each character you create in the Eldest Goals has an inventory space of 60, and you can increase this just by visiting a pack merchant and your main city, your main starter city, or a capital city, all the way up to 140. You can also continue to max this out by buying mounts carrying weight up to 60. So that's about 200 character inventory space. As you can imagine, there's a couple things in the crown store that extends this further. But let's stick with 200 for now. To max out the pack merchant side of things, up to 140 will take you 179,700 gold. So save right around 200,000 in your bank using that storage space I talked about earlier. Moving along to something everyone hates to do, but it's actually pretty easy to work around this, and that's increasing your mount speed. Like I said above, you can increase your storage on your mount, and you can also increase the speed in which you do this. One thing you're going to want to do, as I talked about leveling your PvP skills, is get the continuous attack passive ASAP Rocky. Once you hit level 10, you're going to be invited to Cyrodiil to do an introductionary quest. Do it! You'll hit a high level in your PvP skill line right away, unlocking skills and unlocking continuous attack passive. Take a skill point in there. Your horse will go exceptionally faster just by doing this, even if you hate PvP. Now that you've done that, you can increase per day at 250 gold, speed, stamina, or carrying capacity. Obviously, you're going to want to focus on speed to max it out to 60 at 15,000 gold. 
it's a very long process, but you can cheese this in a couple different ways. One, store your daily rewards. A lot of the daily login rewards will give you various different mount upgrades. You can also use the Endeavor system. So Endeavor system, you can check in your group tab. It has just remedial daily tasks you need to do in order to buy stuff from the crown store without using gems, without using real life money. Can you imagine actually earning something without paying for it? In all seriousness, if you have some endeavors laying around and you really just want to max this thing out with opening up your credit card, this is how I would do it. Endeavors and stored daily login rewards. Get ready to max out that horse with a continuous attack and you won't be a snail riding around Tamriel. Moving along, and that's the alchemy at number nine. You want to buy enough alchemy mats to upgrade this ASAP Rocky right away. And here's the reason, the medicinal use passive actually is one that can increase your performance in the Elder Scrolls Online. When using potions, resulting effects last 30 seconds longer. So what that means is, if you're using these potions for increased weapon damage or spell damage, the major buffs, or you're using this to get your critical buff, you're using it to get more recovery, whatever it is potions are on a 45 second cooldown and with this medicinal use passive maxed out they'll be at 47.5 essentially giving you 100 percent uptime in combat situations assuming you're consuming them on cooldown so a cheesy way to do this is making spider eggs with wormwood or spider eggs with scrib jelly you can start by using your solvent level 10 icor i think is how you pronounce it and then you can level this up and you can start actually taking a skill point if you have that solvent proficiency in the alchemy skill line and get more experience. If you don't want to mess with the skill points, what you can do is you have 400 laying around. You can buy it from the trader's dirt cheap. You can just literally hit 500 of them things and almost be at 50. 500 or so, I don't know the math. I'm not a math nerd. Remember, I'm a YouTuber. I'm a streamer. This is why. But if you have 500 laying around, you can just boom, bang, and you're at 50 and you can take that medicinal use. Or if you don't have that much, what you can do is just rank it up. Go get some of those solvents get more experience points and I think there's a passive in the champion points that gives you a little bit more as well you get that medicinal use you can just respec and take those points out if you're not going to use alchemy or if you have another crafter and you can take advantage of this potion passive right away trust me at end game you're going to have to have this it really helps your survivability with resource sustain and running these buffs on cooldown moving on to number 10 we're talking about more consumables so you're going to need to stockpile some food that works at all levels and there's some really good stuff some of these you get through the daily reward logins or just leveling on other characters. Some of them are junk, some of them are good. One I highly recommend for beginning players without a ton of champion points is Jewels of Misru. Now this comes from the traders, you can craft it. But it's fantastic if you have a little bit of gold in another character because it gives you max health, recovery across the board, health, magic, and stamina really carries your survivability dirt cheap on traders for magic users i highly recommend witch mother's potent brew it's going to give you max magic max health and magic recovery for stamina based users dubious camroran throne exact same thing increase your max stat by max stamina stamina recovery and health and then for potions, you're going to get crown store potions just passively by playing the game and other characters. You can also use endeavors and level up and get some of those passively. Another good option if you're going to be doing battlegrounds as well, or you have other low level characters is Alliance War Potion. Outside of the beginning starting cities or any major city, you're going to have a battleground vendor. They sell Alliance Potions for Alliance Points. And these give you those critical buffs I was talking about earlier. They're going to be very useful later on in the game. But when you're starting out a new character, you're probably not going to have Inner Light or Camouflage Hunter and access to these really important buffs and it'll help increase your damage and survivability. So you can use that Alliance points for playing Battlegrounds or you can get another character that's low level and start feeding those potions and putting them in your bank so you can have them right away. Along with those extra Crown Store ones, you're probably going to junk along with the Crown Store poisons that no one uses. Number 11, is up this is just a very simple tip but repair kits and soul gems if you're a grinder like me that's just going to sit inside and grind zombies for hours and hours and hours because i have no brain cells i would bring repair kits with me and soul gems so soul gems are useful because you're probably going to die you're also going to need to charge your weapons and also repair your gear so you can stay on that grind because you're going to need to level up those skill lines morph them continue to level up all the armor there's a lot to do in a brand new character also the impresario group repair kit so that the impresario can repair you and your your grinding partner's gear so you have those available get them next up is number 12 kind of a complex one and that's master ritz for those that want to level out literally the fastest without grinding so master ritz are literally the fastest way to level 
If you don't know how these work, you need to get certified first with a brand new character. Level up your crafting skill to max 50 and then take the passive to max level in the crafting skill line. An example will be blacksmithing. You need the first passive in the skill line, metal working maxed out to rubidite ingots. Then the more motifs and traits you have learned on that character, you will receive a higher chance of receiving a master writ. Now what you do is you just do on that character or however many you have, crafting writs. Yay, ESO's endgame. What the writs you're looking for are alchemy and shanty. They can be power level, they're very cheap materials, and they're very easy to do. So what you're gonna do is stockpile those, throw those in those banks, so when you unlock your brand new character, you can start banging those out. One of the many reasons ESO's endgame is crafting writs. So once the Arcanist comes out, you return to your home, you go grab those, pop your XP scroll, and then I usually go to Deshaun. There's actually a couple helpful add-ons that help you do this. You pop that master writ, you complete it, you run to the master writ vendor, turn it in, rinse and repeat over and over and over. You need a total of 215 total alchemy or enchanting writs to reach level 50. Spend your weekend doing crafting writs instead of spending your time with your family. Next up is stock transmutes. Transmutation stones allow you to basically retransmute something in the correct trait. You're always going to want to stockpile these things. So two ways to do it is daily dungeon finder with as many characters as you can stomach getting through each day. Another one for PvP sweats is in a 30 day campaign reaching tier one. I think that's right around 20 or 25,000 alliance points. It takes around 45 minutes to an hour of actually PvP. Or if you can't stand PvP in the Elder Scrolls, go to a dead campaign and literally repair walls. It'll take you roughly the same time and roughly half the deaths. Either way, you can stockpile up to a thousand if you have ESO plus, and I highly recommend it because there's going to be some new good gear sets you're going to want to maintain. Number 14's up, and that's maxing your crafting. So if you're really interested in maxing out this character so you can do more crafting writs, then you can pre-purchase intricate items from guild traders to deconstruct. You can also save intricates when you're doing your master crafting writs and store them in your bank or those other guild storage spaces I talked about a little bit earlier. You can also use a cheese strap by sending it to your friend, having them return it and sitting in your mailbox for up to 30 days with a ton of mail. Then when the Arcanist drops, if you want to level these up, just grab them, make sure to unlock the green CP inspiration boost, and then just start grinding these things out and leveling that puppy. And last but not least, probably what you want to know about, and that's gear in the Elder Scrolls Online, because gear makes the players, right? It's a joke. Okay, here's some good gear sets. The number one I'd recommend is Deadly Strikes. This comes from Cyrodiil. You can buy it off the traders. It increases your damage for channels and damage over times, which equals pretty much everything the Arcanist does. And it's very easy to get a hold of. Very, very good damage. A beginner set, if you're brand new and just have base game, is from Reaper's March, and that's Soul Shine. Activating ability with a cast or a channel time grants you 369 weapon or spell damage for five seconds. You'll be able to keep a high uptime on this. For more serious players, I would recommend Recommend Perfected Coral Riptide for stamina builds. This comes from the High Isles Trial, Dread Sail Reef, and basically you tank your stamina, so you lower your stamina and it increases your weapon and spell damage all the way up to 740. This will be a meta set when this comes out and something worth collecting. There's a couple really good proc sets you can run with this thing, and one is Whirl of the Depths. Perfected version also comes from Dread Sail Reef, High Isles Trial. Fantastic, does really, really good damage damage and comes in light armor. Pillars of Nern is another good one. This requires the DLC Horns of the Reach. Comes from the Falk Wreath Hold Dungeon. A fantastic proc set that also does very, very good damage and will be meta when it launches. And there's just a ton more. I have links in the description of my Arcanist build, what I'll be using. There's also a new one called Anzul's Torment. This will come from Sandy Edge, the new trial. And this thing will be awesome with the Arcanist. There will be another Mythic that will be okay with the Arcanist as well. But these gear sets will get you started. Check the website for more. So when this launches, I'll probably have a guide on how to actually level how I do it efficiently in a combination of grinding and doing dungeons as well. Because when you start a new character to fully get mid max and optimize, it takes a lot. So I hope you got something out of this. And if you did, please do me a big favor, hit that thumbs up, share with some other people, leave me a comment so the algorithm loves this. And oh my God, it shares with everybody on their YouTube feed. And you can see my big, huge clickbait thumbnail that I always do. Also, check me out on twitch.tv slash Gaming where my mom claims I'm the best streamer alive. Appreciate you.